Good morning, everybody. I'm so excited. Today is celebration day. We're celebrating several things, but the one thing we're celebrating, we are wide open and back to normal with a piano sitting here on the set and with Travis and Alicia Bridgman. I'm so excited. It's been a while. Over a year. Over right. a year. Now, y'all <coughs> battled COVID. Your parents battled COVID. Um, sadly, your mother passed just before all this craziness yes. started. February last year. Mm -hmm. We have come through it, come out of it. We're ready to live again. Y'all were at you know, the, the Kaler family does that song, I'll Live Again. <laughs> Maybe today <laughs> we, 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 we need that to play song. that, that's right. <laughs> but we are ready to open everything back up. I saw the greatest sign on a church, and it said, full opening. They're having Sunday school, they're having revival, they're having prayer meetings, they're having everything now. And I said, isn't that awesome? We've just started back our Sunday school just mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago. But, yeah, we're declaring Independence Day early this year. That's right. We're like the Apostle Paul. We're finally on the road to Damascus, <laughs> finally. That's exactly yes. right. Yes. That's exactly right. <laughs> well, y'all are here today for multiple reasons. Number one, missed seeing you so much. Yes, yes, but yes. the idea that we are now about to celebrate something really, really cool in gospel music. And yes. we're going to share a little bit yes. of that and a little bit of a presentation that y'all did and, and some good news in gospel music. But we're all going to share some really great news of prayers answered. Yes, and I amen. hope I can get See through this again. without absolutely mm. um, flying all to pieces. But mm. I had asked y'all, and, and I go to First Baptist Ball Ground, and I had asked everybody at church to please pray for a certain family. And I, you know, didn't give them all the details, just that he had been battling cancer. It was very, very early stages, hoping for good results. And th this is the news, because prayers, prayers, prayers have been answered. This is a message from Danny Hensley. It says, everyone, I have great news. The doctor from MD Anderson called. The tumor that was in my pancreas has disappeared. Has disappeared. Amen. There is nothing yeah. growing from my pancreas to my pancreas or in my pancreas. The doctor said the tumors in the pancreas are gone and the cancer that is in my abdomen is shrinking. She said that the chemo is definitely working. That is amazing. That is amazing. I believe in my heart of hearts that this is God working, not the chemo. Amen. Prayers, our prayers Amen. are being answered. God is the great physician. We serve an awesome God who not only hears our prayers, but listens to and answers our prayers. God is in control. Please keep praying. God is listening and working miracles. I give God all the praise, honor, and the glory. I ask you, please thank God for what he has done because he, the great physician, is worthy to be praised. He has heard our prayer, our cries. He is blessing us. Please lift up praises to him for this. He will see us through this process. And the next step, and they go through, he is going to have to have some chemo, and the doctors and the specialists are getting together, and they're going to have a teleconference, and, um, and there will be decisions made. Um, they have a tumor board. Imagine that in MD Anderson that people mm. look at the tumor. And wow. it's, it's really interesting and that Danny is completely healed. That's what we're going to be praying for. The chemo will not make Danny sick. We're going to pray for that. We're going to pray that this miracle continues. And, and isn't it good in today's world to be able to say we as a praying nation are seeing results from prayer? Amen. Yes. And Amen. we're seeing it. And, and, you know, when I put it on Facebook, I said, y'all, please share it. Well, my sister belongs to a big church in Florida, and I'm like, everybody, I don't care if you're a little church, mini church, I don't care if you pray at home, I don't care what you do, just put him on your prayer list. That's right. And we have seen now, when he left here, he was looking a little peaked, and we were worried. And um, to be honest, pancreatic cancer is one of those that it is a tough mm. one to, to Very conquer. Aggressive. Yes. Very aggressive, and we've seen God do his work. And it is, um, it is all that. It is just, it is amazing. So, he yay. made us. He can yay. heal us. That's right. That's right. That's, That's right. right. And today, I, I got a blessing. I was coming out Jordan Road, and we just have to say, if y'all are anywhere near Ball Ground, stay the heck away, <laughs> yeah, because right. today they are paving Main Street, <laughs> and what a disaster. But we're so happy to have the paving. I turned <laughs> to go to the office, and I went, oops, and I put it in reverse and went the other way. Came down Old Dawsonville to Jordan. And I got a glimpse of Precious Jim Wilkie, who is a, a member of First Baptist Ground, faithful member, wonderful gentleman, who is laying in his hospital bed with the window open so he can look outside. And I thought, how oh, precious is that? Amen. I got to see a glimpse of him enjoying the bright, beautiful day. Oh, so, so pray for Jim Wilkie. And, hmm. you know, we see prayers answered every single day. Your daddy was in the hospital a long time with COVID. Travis, you 
first time in my life I'm going to be in the hospital. Yes, yes, and yeah. you had a, a big <clears throat> bout of it, and it, it was tough. It was four tough. Four days, four days And in the then hospital. little weak and quiet and little t shy Tim and <laughs> Alicia just beat it. She, she just beat she it. She had to take care of all of us. She was <laughs> yes. our caregiver during yes. that time. She had Isn't it too, but she, but she was a real trooper. She just uh, was able to to minister to all of us while Louie and I was in the hospital and her mom was at home with it and she had it, but yet um, she she was, uh, she was carried on. Yes, she did. <laughs> amen, yes, amen. She did. did you find a strength you weren't sure you had? Well, I'd, I've always believed that the Lord lets you do what you have to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what I do usually is hold up through it all and then call out the end. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. yeah when, I, when I can, but it was, one of the hardest times in my life because mm -hmm. mama had it too yeah yeah and i took daddy to the hospital one day and then travis to the hospital the next day and wow. of course with and all the restrictions to no. i had to just pull Almost, up to the yeah. emergency room yeah. door and the nurse came out and took them in and i was i didn't get out of the car wow. I just had to go home and wait for the phone call mm -hmm. So it was, but fortunately they were in Northside Forsyth and they were wonderful. They, mm -hmm. the doctor called me great every experience. day and mm -hmm. um, the nurses I'm told were great to them and mm -hmm. you know, they had great care while they were in there, but I was kept in touch with the doctor and sometimes the nurse too would call. Mm -hmm. So I knew what was going on, but it was a, a frightful time for me. We had lost Travis's mother. Right. And then my dad was in ICU, and they called me two different evenings and said he might not live through the night. Wow. Mm. And I remember one night just praying and said, Lord, you know, please don't take all of our parents in one year. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah. that's what it looked like could happen. Sure. Yeah, yeah. But he answered that prayer and the prayers of a lot of people. And um, Lee was great. He was on the outside. He brought everything to our door that we needed. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. He right. didn't get sick the whole time. The Still Lord. hasn't had the virus. He and his wife either one <laughs> has not great. had the virus. Yeah. So. Um, he, Travis and I had it. Mama and Daddy had it. Andrea's parents had it. Andrea's grandmother had it. Wow. She passed away. And wow. Lee's mm -hmm. co-workers around him wow. were catching it and had it. And Lee and Andrea stayed healthy the whole time. they just been hedged in. What a blessing. But, yeah. And, and I'm so, so thankful that uh, I was able to be with Mama in her last hours, and, yes. you know, because it's before the, all the <coughs> shutdown started. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to be with her. I don't know what it had been like to look at through the window at her oh, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, I, I can <coughs> give you an example. Freddie's daddy passed away. Freddie was the only person allowed to be at the hospital because he was the caretaker. Mm. So he was at the hospital day in and day out. And um, he sat there and watched his daddy dwindle away, and then his dad was brought, sent home for one day. And then the next night he went to be with the Lord. And then to say that you're from one of the largest families in Cherokee County and you can't have a funeral. Ten people were allowed to go in the funeral home. So it was just, it's devastating. you know, it was weird. But then to show up at Yellow Creek Baptist Church and the cemetery was packed with people. Oh, and one good. of the cousins was out there with his mm. guitar and they, he sang. Mm. And it was open casket at the funeral, at the grave. And it was just, that was what needed to be done, you know. So everybody got to be there, but they followed the distance rule. And that was one of the things that you love when your family comes out, even though it's the toughest situation. You come out and you support that family. And that's what we saw. And that's what mm -hmm. a lot of families saw. You, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you do what you have to do to get through it. And you do it in a respectful way and honor that safe distancing, that's right. and that's what that's what happened. Well, it was so really sad. that's the only chance you have, you know, mm -hmm. to be with family. And and I had a funeral last year that my um, son preached the funeral and carried the casket. Wow, wow! Uh, and just about 10, 10 people there, and yeah. it's just it's sad. Yeah. You know, Kenny Williams. You can't get it back. Mm -hmm. um, you can't get that time back. Kenny and Travis did the funeral, mm -hmm. and so. They, Kenny played the piano, and we all three sung. And like Travis said, they both spoke, and then they both were pallbearers. Yep. Wow. Because there could only be 13 people there, mm -hmm. they said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, <coughs> and once you it, lose you that know, opportunity, it's gone. Oh, yeah. You, know, you don't have that chance yeah. to go over. Yeah, absolutely. Now, we had a uh, um, uh, man in my church passed away on uh, January the 1st. It was our, our organist, it was uh, Joe Wallace. Uh-huh. He passed away January 1st, and we had his memorial service 
this month. Wow. They wanted to wait till they could come back together. Right. So we had a nice little memorial service mm -hmm. uh, on June the 5th yeah. in our church for him. Well, and uh, we've lost church members too during this time, and it's just so weird that you didn't have and couldn't have, and, and it was it was just, it was crazy. I know. Mm -hmm. And it is hard because you remember those hugs you get at the funeral home and those great bowls of potato salad your neighbors bring. And <laughs> you know, right. I, I went right. to the funeral That's home right. up here this weekend and it was kind of my <clears throat> official coming out party because people were hugging and shaking hands and I was like, okay. And there were only five people in there with masks on and everybody mm. else was hugging and shaking hands. And I said, it is time. It is time we live our life again. Yeah. And I was joking with y'all. I said, I, I can die, you know, up to 95 years old and my life insurance <laughs> is going to pay off. So, you know, you just, it is what it is. It's God's yeah. plan. Yes. It's right. God's perfect plan. And well, he's the, in control. And he said it, all our hairs numbered. He said we can't extend our life by one second. I mean, that's right. It's going to be according to his plan and purpose. Yep. I think about your daddy and what he went through two years ago. That's he right. almost yes, died sure from a crazy something that happened because of something he ate. E. And coli developed into sepsis. Yeah, yes. he almost mm -hmm. died. So sure your did. daddy is kind of like the cat that has nine lives. <laughs> well, yeah, well, and a part of it like that. Yeah. Last July, he had a grand mal seizure. Oh, and sure non right. that. And he That's was right. non responsive for over three hours. Yeah. So that happened to him. and. Then Crazy. in September, we all had COVID. So, and Mama has been in the hospital with AFib. And so it's just been a wild ride. The, sure has. the last year a, has been hard. Mm -hmm. Yes. Been, yeah. a, been yeah. a faith builder. Been a faith yeah, builder. Absolutely. I mean, that's, uh, you know, the, the rocks are what you climb on. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go well, through difficult this, times. Well, this like week, that. we said goodbye to a precious, precious lady. Um, Charlie and Margie were like, my the parents I wish I could have taken home and kept for me mm. just precious precious people and she went to be with the Lord this weekend um, after battling dementia Charlie went on and then she was left for about four years without him and her daughter stepped in and you talk about a rough year because she was 24 7 caregiver for her mama and she did whatever it took to take care of her mama and as I went to visit Margie was running down the yard, everything was great. She was active, she wanted me to see her flowers. She sat down and ate a hamburger. We brought her for the Dairy Queen. She just was, she was herself. And then the last time I saw her, she was a little shell. Mm. And that was so, it made it, it made the passing to me easier because Sandra was there every moment of her mother's life. And then when her mother's life was gone, she knew that she had done everything she possibly could. And she did it by being her caregiver. You know, she made a decision to do this. And it had to be mind boggling. You know, as the only child, you're responsible for everything. Yes. Right. And Sandra mm -hmm. had one brother who was out of state and so she took it all on. And I told her at the funeral home, I said, it's your time now. You need to rest, you need to refresh, you need to relax so you can live your life now because she chose to make that decision to stay with her mom 24 7 mm. and she mm. she was amazing she was just you know and and through phases and you know how dementia has those phases yes. and there would be a good phase there'd be a bad phase there'd be a funny phase there'd be just all kinds of crazy things happening and and she made it through it and i said how in the world this woman she has the strength but it came from god her, her parents that's took right. her to church every Sunday, yep. and that's mm -hmm. where her strength came mm -hmm. from. And there was no other explanation for how she made it through it. What about families that don't have that hope? Oh, they my goodness. They don't have that strength. Oh, yeah. You know, having yeah. to bear up on it. That's why suicide has gone up so much. People have been Absolutely. so depressed and, uh, you know, yeah. just don't see any way out and, and yeah. just feel hopeless. And yep. uh, the isolation, it's been bad enough on the church because, you know, the church thrives on fellowship. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's mm -hmm. our lifeblood is being together. Yep. And then all this period of time we had to be separated and... Uh, but, and, uh, and normally, if you have someone who's sick or in the hospital, go visit them. family oh, yeah. and yeah. friends will bring a dish over mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. supper over and just and help out with the load yeah. that you have to bear. Yeah. But with COVID, no one could come in the mm -hmm. house to help you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you you have no choice but to get through it. Yeah. And and the only person sometimes that you can talk to is the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. There's Absolutely. one good thing that's come out of it for our church is it, it thrust us into having to have a uh, a, a, a video ministry, you know, yes. being on video yes. on the internet. Yes. And so uh, um, 
we while we were shut down, we you know we started having it and showing it. So we've continued mm -hmm. that ministry. Oh, yeah, so now I've become ministry. a TV evangelist now. Yes, so. yes. <laughs> well, and so, see, I kept telling our pastor, I said, Jeff, people. you need to do this. You need to mm -hmm. do this. Need. He said, Well, we might consider it. We might consider it. He was forced into it. Right. And now you can watch, and and like we might have forty to fifty people in church. We got two hundred and something people that have watched it during the week, That's and so right. you're That's ministering right. to more people. Oh, absolutely, and it yeah. makes sense. And mm -hmm. I said, Matt Dibler and I had this conversation many years ago. He said, if I had to give up something, what would you think? And I said, because he's a great pastor, but he's a great lead singer. And mm -hmm. I said, that's a tough one, big boy. But I said, think about the people you reach singing. That's right. the, the, the many of those people will never darken the door of a church. That's right. But you minister them to them in singing, mm -hmm. and so I think that's why. I've been such a supporter of gospel music because you might be laying at home in the bed and gospel singing Jubilee would come on. You'd run to the TV <laughs> to listen right, and you'd right, hear those amazing right. words, God yes. walks the dark hills. Yes. And you know that that's the truth. And yes. so a lot of people were brought to the Lord because of music. And so Matt said, you're not making this any easier on me, you know, because he was going to make a decision. Do I preach and sing? Do I preach or sing? Do I, what do I do? And I said, well, you reach more people singing. Absolutely. And I don't that's think right. that was what that's he wanted to hear. Because <laughs> well, <laughs> well you know? but I said, your songs have touched so many people. And when you think about the song Resurrection Ground, over 25 mm -hmm. years old mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. that song has ministered to so many hundreds of thousands of people. Right. And I said, Matt, it was that song that touched all those people. It might not have been a sermon you delivered, but it was that song. Well, it's the gospel and in the gospel music. That's, that's right. right. That's, that's right. right. And y'all are here today. We're going to talk preserving gospel music. Amen. Amen. So we're going to take right. our commercial break. We're going to take care of business, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to share some things. And one of the highlights, um, my daughter, Angela, was not a big gospel music fan, but the moment she heard Karen Peck do Four Days Late, all mm. of a sudden, she mm. said, oh, oh, oh. And she ran in there to the TV, and she turned it on. And then she heard Back to Bethany oh, singing oh. something, and she said, Mama, listen to this song. And then all of a sudden, she was across the hall at the office. She, she didn't listen to gospel she music. She listened to Leonard Skinner. Oh, <laughs> you know? okay. so, so the idea that that kid, and I told Karen after Angela's death, I said, your music meant so much to her. And you were able to do something we're going to show in just a minute when we yes. come back. So let's take a commercial break, and we'll be back shortly. <laughs> It's that time again for Fire in the Sky. Fireworks over Lake Blue Ridge this July 4th. All thanks to our sponsors, Blue Water Energy, the Bannon County Chamber of Commerce, and Caldwell Banker High Country Realty. So come join the live excitement of Fire in the Sky. Fireworks over Lake Blue Ridge on July 4th. Or watch it live on ETC Channel 3. Whether it's memories of your first trip to the local Dairy Queen or your daily visit for a $5 lunch special, the Jasper Dairy Queen has been a part of the community for over 40 years. Locally owned and operated, Jasper DQ is the place where specialty items often become favorites. Burgers, shakes, chicken tenders with yummy dip and gravy, and don't forget the rings and fries. Celebration cakes are always fresh and fast and include the awesome blizzard cake. Stop by where folks are always meeting and eating. 515 at Highway 53. Just follow the crowd to the Dairy Queen. ETC knows the internet is evolving, taking new twists and turns as we add our input, make our choices, and follow the light that connects us all. It's quite a journey, one to experience with the fastest speeds available. Contact ETC. Connect to the internet speed that suits your journey. And enjoy the ride. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. 
Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. ladies in gospel music and and for y'all who don't know Karen Pick started about a hundred years ago as a child <laughs> with Rex Nealon <laughs> and Fred Wyndham happened to have some footage that he did in Marietta of Karen years and years and years and years ago and we shared some of that um, on a June program a couple a few years ago and it was so funny because when I, I said Oh my gosh, that's Karen Peck. I can tell she had the big hair. <laughs> big hair. <laughs> but, but it was so cool to see when she stepped out on faith and went with her own group. Mm -hmm. And she left because you're thinking she's leaving one of the greatest. Mm. And then she stepped out on faith. And oh. evidently it's worked. Oh, she's had, what, 17 number one uh, songs, I think it is. Yeah. And how many people has she brought to the Lord? Because so many Only people God knows. look at her music as um, it's uplifting, it's hopeful, it's it's full of joy, and she she delivers some songs that you're just like that makes so much sense. And much of her music is common sense, mm -hmm. but it's put to music, mm -hmm. and you listen and you're like, oh, I get the message. Mm -hmm. I really get that message. Right. And I think Four Days Late was one of those examples. And a lot of people oh, have done it, but there's something about how it's she does top it. Top songs of, of all time, like in the top 100 or something like oh, that. I, I don't believe doubt it is. That. It's, yeah. It's a, yeah. It was a great Well, song. we're going to share now. Now, I don't know how you pulled this off, that you've got <laughs> to do this. Yeah, and that we, she, she was having a live singing at her property. Homecoming, her 30th, 30th anniversary of her mm -hmm, homecoming mm -hmm. singing at the uh, New River Park in Dahlonega. Right. And, um, and I have we, been there, and I can tell you it's hot. It's humid. It's muggy. Usually, it was. Yes, it. <laughs> yes. But, but w uh, normally, uh, when we would announce our uh, Hall of Fame inductees, we would do it all at one time. We'd announce the whole class. But we decided this year to try to extend the uh, the excitement and create the buzz on the on uh -huh. the uh, media and so forth. <clears throat> we would just do one at a time. And so we knew Karen was going to be uh, one of our inductees. So it just so happened in the providence of God, was have what better location. Yeah. Then they're in her hometown, yes. surrounded by people she loved, and they loved her, you know, all of her life and so forth. So then, so we decided that we would that would be the, the proper location to uh, to go and to uh, announce to her that she'd be inducted into the hall. Did of Did she have any idea? No, she said she. she said it was, you can hear what she says on okay. the video. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, Cole, can you pull that up now? <laughs> okay. And again, Karen Peck in New River. <laughs> Kendall is Kingsman Quartet. Travis Bridgman of the Southern Gospel Music Association Executive Board. Yes, we're both on the board of directors for the SGMA. Excited to be here at Karen Peck and New Rivers Homecoming. About to make some history tonight. Just stay tuned and we'll see, show you what's going to happen. I got a surprise for you tonight. Oh, okay. And so we had something that we wanted to share with you that's really, really special tonight. So I know that I'm going to catch you by surprise. But we've got some special friends of yours that I'm going to ask them to come to the stage now. And uh, they're going to let you know something that's a surprise for you. Oh. So if you guys will go ahead and make your way to the stage. Here they come. And I'll let you have my microphone. Thank you, Ray. Hey. Good to be back with you again. We have a special guest with us this evening. You know him from the Mighty Kingsman Quartet, Mr. Alan Kendall. advisory board and we have another special guest with us tonight Karen he's the lead singer of the Kingdom Airs and president of the Southern Gospel Music Association Mr. Arthur Rice coming by way of Facebook Arthur I think you have a special announcement for all these folks here in the mountains of North Georgia I do I do thank you so much I appreciate it I wish I could be there in person I'm in the studio and this hallelujah. Yeah. Karen, where are you? I'm not, hey, friend. There you are. Hey, hey friend, how are you? I'm good. It's good to see I've your got, face. It's great to see you too. 
Congratulations on a successful homecoming. Thank you. We have some great people here. Great crowd. My wife is there, and she's been filling me in, sending me videos. Just, just thrilled to death to be there. And she says it's just wonderful. Oh, thank you. We love having Tammy here and Travis, yeah. too. We have something special for you tonight. And on behalf of the Southern Gospel Music Association, its members, its uh, board members, we want to congratulate you on being inducted into the Southern Gospel Music Hall of Fame. to our uh, table over here for pictures and we have another presentation for you a little gift for you also okay. and will you folks help us with that new museum so we can hang her plaque in that new museum <laughs> thank y'all i want you to know that uh, just that they announced it here with all of you because we love y'all you're our favorite people and mama heaven mama down on the front and bill and sandra and ruby back there and and uh, it just means so much. Thank you. And I, I'm a wreck. And y'all, you know, I'm getting pictures made and my hair's out the here. So uh, anyway, I love y'all. And uh, Susan. <laughs> surprise me anymore. I'm serious. I'm so surprised. Thank you. And thank you guys so much for coming tonight and doing this. I am a mess. So thank you. I'm honored. I love you. Thank you. Thanks, friend. <laughs> I told Karen a little bit earlier, I said, I'm going to change the schedule just a little bit. And she's like, well, what are you doing? I said, well, I just got, I just need a few minutes right between the two groups. I said, I may need you up here to help me out. And so we gave her a little surprise. Nobody, nobody is great as Karen Peck and New River. And Karen, such a great representation for the Lord and for our music. And so, so proud of her, so proud of her. That is congratulations to Karen. She is amazing. She is such a talent. She is such a minister of music. Hmm. And what? Hmm. how many people has she reached? How many concerts? God knows. How many places? Only yeah, God knows. That's right. absolutely. And we got tickled this morning before you got here. Cole said, let's do a test on the piano. And I knew four little things. <laughs> and I just <laughs> cracked up laughing. And you walked in. And I was like, oh, gosh. Oh, <laughs> you know? But, but uh, God gave you a talent. God gave you a talent. Um, 
your grandmother had a talent for writing. And one of the first songs I remember y'all doing was one that your grandmother wrote. Yes. Yes. Simon's and Irish Day. Mm -hmm. What was the name of the church we went to in coming? Harmony where they Grove. Had the, yes. Harmony Grove. The where amazing we first coconut cake. That's where we first met. Yeah. <laughs> We met over a cake, imagine that. <laughs> but but I can remember that song, and it was upbeat and positive, and, and just that's what gospel music needs to do. It needs to lift your spirits. Mm -hmm. And then when it's time to say goodbye to somebody, you need to hear Earth's Loss is Heaven's Gain, the singing cooks, oh, Jeanette oh, Cook. Oh, my goodness. You know, yes. Earth's Loss is Love Heaven's cooks, Gain. Yes. 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 And, and then you need to hear Far Away, and I'm getting cold chills. You know, I think the McCamies did Far Away first. There are those songs of comfort. That's what gospel music is about. And yes. we can never, never, never lose gospel music. Amen. To me, right. I don't know how I would get through a day without it. And I'll listen to certain songs. And I'll, when you were playing Old Rugged Cross this morning, I was just, boo, you know, yeah. because those are the songs that mm. you remember, yeah. those yeah. special moments in your life. They strike the chord in your heart, don't they? Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. Just, they're, they're anointed, you mm -hmm. know, over and... and and they, they last, and, yeah. and they've just got such an um, eternal message to them. Forever, forever. That's right. <laughs> well, Travis, I want you to deliver a short message, and then we're going to okay. talk more about gospel music. Okay. All right. Well, <clears throat> heard about a father took his son one time to a large city museum, and for two hours he just sighed and complained, and finally in desperation said, Dad, can we go somewhere where something's real? because he's at the museum, you know. Uh -huh. You know, some people feel that way about the Bible. You know, it's old stories, old relics and so forth. Not really much relevance today. You know, during this uh, pandemic, they tried to say the church was non-essential. Oh my gosh. But dear friends, uh, during that time especially, the church and the message of the church, which is the gospel, is the most essential message in the world. Mm -hmm. What I have on my heart in, in this hour is a message of reconciliation. That's bringing those that are separated together and the Bible has the, the, the message of reconciliation and there's a there's a beautiful story over in the Old Testament uh, that illustrates not only the 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 need of reconciliation of being brought together but also the means by which we can be reconciled uh, back to God but we'll see also there's a need for us to be reconciled one to another as well and so our text this morning will come from a time in King David's life uh, the darkest time in his life. Listen to this, this circumstance. His, uh, his, his, uh, his son uh, raped his half-sister. Because of that, her full brother Absalom killed uh, Amnon. And because of that, Absalom had to flee uh, from, from, uh, from the kingdom. And, and David was in no position to try to punish him because, why? Because, well, David was guilty of adultery. David was guilty of murder. So he had no, no uh, moral authority to really act against Absalom in that way, but yet his heart yearned for his son Absalom because he had been banished from the kingdom. And so he wanted to, to bring him back, but yet because he was a king, he had to uphold the law. And as the king, uh, he had to uphold justice so it, because he knew that Absalom came back, he'd have to face uh, uh, justice. But as a father, he longed for his son to be returned to him. So Joab, who was the nephew of King David, uh, wanted devised a plan to bring Absalom back to the kingdom. And so it involved, you'll find in 2 Samuel chapter 14, it involved uh, enlisting a lady, she was called the woman of Tekoa. He, he took her and made her dress in like mourning clothes and like she was real destitute and came and presented this real sob story to King David. She came and, and shared news with him. It wasn't real. I guess this is the first fake news mm -hmm. we find here. Uh, so it's talking about how that that she had two sons, her husband had died, and they got, his sons got in an argument, and one killed the other, and then the law demanded that the manslayer be executed as well. So she being a widow, so she came to the king and said, oh king, he said, if, 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 if I leave my son, if, he's, if, if I turn him over to the, uh, uh, to the law, he'll be executed, and I'll have no children, no inheritance. So she appealed to his mercy to forgive, and to, to bring back her son, and to forgive him so she could continue, you know, and, and help in the family. Well, um, David fell for it. It was not a real story. You know, he, he did that before when Nathan came to him about the issue of uh, Bathsheba and talked about the man had a little new lamb and, and how that uh, the, the, the visitor came, the stranger came, and, and, and instead of uh, uh, offering up his, his, out of his flock, he took this little man's lamb and so forth. And so it was, it was a, a parable 
about what David had done uh, to Uriah in taking his wife Bathsheba. Well, this is another story that David fell for again. So the trap was set. So David said, you know, I assure you that nothing will happen to your son. No hair will be harmed upon his head. He will be, he'll be brought back. So listen to what she said. She said she turned, it, she turned the tables on him. And so uh, in 2 Samuel 14 and verse 13, the woman said, Wherefore then hast thou thought such a thing against the people of God? For the king does speak this thing as though uh, one which is faulty, in that the king does not fetch home again his banished. In other words, you see she's saying, uh, you're willing to, to forgive a stranger and bring them back. What about your own son? You're estranged from your own son. But then, listen to what she says in verse 14. This is a golden text from the Old Testament. It, 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 is, it is the gospel uh, here in one verse. Listen to this. For we must needs die. Well, nobody can argue with that. We must needs die. And as our water spilt on the ground. In other words, it's irrecoverable. Uh, it's unrecoverable, irreversible, in other words. So she's, she's, uh, what she's saying is there, there here's, first of all, here's the need for reconciliation. There's only a certain time you have. Only during this life will you have the opportunity to be reconciled for those that maybe you've fallen out of, of favor with and so forth. So she says, King, uh, we must all need to die. And so if you're going to do something, you better do it now. So the urgency of reconciliation. Uh, and so then she goes on to say, uh, Neither doth God respect any person, yet listen, Here's the, the means of reconciliation. Yet doth he devise means that his banished be not expelled from him. Oh, listen. The woman at Tekoa was reminding King David of two things. First of all, reconciliation is only possible in this life. Listen, dear friends, even if you're right in that argument that caused a, a, a split, a separation, even if you were right, is being right worth giving up that relationship? You know, how many people do we know that uh, something happened in the family and they were estranged for years and years. Oh, listen, dear friends, don't wait. Do you have to wait, weep, weep, weep bitter tears of regret at the side of a casket? That's true. Don't wait. If, if, you, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're estranged from somebody today, a husband, a wife, um, son, daughter, friend, family, whatever it is, listen, is, is it worth standing up for your rights, say, well, I'm, well, I'm going to wait for them to come back and apologize. Well, listen, did God wait for us? No, he forgave us freely, just as he forgave David. He said, he said, even though uh, Nathan said, thy sin's been put away from thee, David, so he had been forgiven. God brought his banished back. He didn't, he didn't, he let him be expelled from him. And so that was the, so we see the, the two things. First, reconciliation is only possible in this life. Again, um, we only have this one opportunity. So God's heart is for reconciliation, not condemnation. Secondly, the means by which God could bring us back, the banished ones, back to him was salvation. God has found a way. He devised means. He planned a plan, what it says in Hebrew. He devised means to reconcile us to him, and so should we to each other. You know, because of sin, man was banished from the garden, and was, was sent out from, from the garden and was banished and separated from God. But God made a way to bring us back to him. And the way that God devised was the gospel, the good news. His banished ones can be brought back to him through the death, burial, and resurrection of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus paid the, the, the price of our punishment for our sin on the cross that we might be freed from sin's punishment. The Bible says the just for the unjust that he might bring us back to God. Reconciliation. You know, David brought back his banished son, unfortunately, without asking Absalom uh, to, to confess what he did. He, wanted, he should at least ask him to, to own up to what he did without confession and without repentance. And, and Absalom eventually turned into a rebel against David. Well, in the same sense, we can't just come back to God without, first of all, acknowledging that we've been separated from him. We must confess our sins. And it says he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He has devised a means. That means was the old rugged cross that Jesus would take our sin upon his body, bear the penalty, and all that would trust in the, the shed blood of Jesus Christ could be reconciled. He says, Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Be ye reconciled to God. Be brought back together. See, we've been separated. David committed adultery and murder, and God forgave him. But his anger kept him from bringing back his son. You know, Mark Twain said that 
that anger is like acid. It does more harm to the vessel in which it is stored than on the object onto which it is poured. So if you've got anger in your heart today against somebody, if you've got ought against your brother, Jesus says, before you can, before you can go to church and, and offer your gift and so forth, you first go to that brother and be reconciled. You see, that there, there's got to be that proper uh, vertical relationship, uh, horizontal relationship, man to man. That how can we love God who we have not seen if we do not love man who we can see? So the, the, the need for reconciliation is urgent today. Let me challenge you. Maybe there's somebody in your life that uh, you've been at odds for years and something's happened and you maybe not even remember what happened, but yet it's like the Hatfield McCoys. Look at the generations of, of the fights and all that they went through and they can't even, couldn't remember what it's about, but yet they, was, they knew that something had happened. Well, maybe there's some kind of generational thing that's happened. Well, you break that today. You go and you seek to be reconciled to your brother. Finally, the Bible says, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. Oh, that wonderful message, the essential message of the, of the gospel today, the, the need for reconcili reconciliation. You need to be brought back to God. You've been banished because of your sin, but yet God is standing there waiting like the prodigal son. He's waiting for his son to come back. And so you can just say, just, just pray this prayer. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to go to hell. I know I'm separated from you, but I believe Jesus died upon the cross and has bridged that gap and has brought me back into favor with you. I trust him as my Lord and Savior based on his death, burial, and resurrection. And, and, and th thank you, Lord, for saving me. That's a, that's a simple prayer. That's a prayer of reconciliation to God, the prayer of salvation. So I pray today that maybe you'll be reconciled first to your brother or sister, but, but most of all, be reconciled to God. Amen. Now I know why you chose Old Rugged Cross to play. <laughs> well, I, I didn't even think of you that. Know what? Okay. okay. The perfect song. The perfect okay. song. Okay, we're going to put up a poster uh, okay. on the screen for a minute, and we're going to talk about this SGMA singing that's going to happen. And then during that time, we're going to sneak you over to the piano. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about this is number one. Uh, everybody, we knew and loved Jerry Goff, one of the most fantastic pastors, preachers I've ever heard. I love to hear him preach. Uh, love to hear he and little Jan sing. Uh, what a blessing they were to so many people. And, and this is in honor of not just him, but so many people who, Vestal and everybody else, who brought gospel music to, to those who, you know, I was listening to the Beach Boys and the Rolling Stones, and all of a sudden I'm listening to Vestal. So think about it. So you went from rock and roll to yeah. the rock that don't roll. I did. Okay. <laughs> I did. I did. Okay. I did. So, so we're going to, um, if you want to leave that poster up, Cole for a minute and then we'll just sneak Travis over to the piano is that cool okay and we've got a video too okay yeah this is of the Bridgmans when they first came to ETC is that right is that the one okay now this is okay this is not that one this is when they were in the car and I was sitting in the back seat and I got a full-blown Bridgman's concert. We were headed down to WATC in Atlanta and we were going to film a program and y'all were practicing. So you're going to get to sit right there in the back seat of their car with me and you're going to get to hear the Bridgman's do one of my favorite songs. Here we go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I started out with a made-up mind one day cross the finish line pressing toward the mark and for the prize at times i've had to stand my ground satan's tried to turn me around i will not be hindered by his lies i'm not gonna walk away i've got too much at stake i've gone Home. Now they await for us to win this race. A banquet like we've never known will be held at God's royal throne, and there will be rewarded for our faith. I'm not gonna walk away, I've got too much at stake, I've come too far. 
Hey guys, I gotta tell you about one more thing in that uh, July the 18th at Antioch Baptist Church, the Dixie Echoes and the Bridgemans. At six o'clock. Six o'clock. And you can get on their Facebook page and you can find directions and how to get there. And again, this is July the 18th, so mark your calendar. Dixie Echoes always bring in a full house. So yay, that's exciting. Now we're gonna go to, and Alicia, when we see this, I think this is one of the first times you were ever on ETC. Okay. And it was, um, you had on lavender. I can remember that because I said, oh, that's Angela's favorite color. And we're going to go to Travis right now. So we're going to do a couple of songs with Travis on the piano. And then hopefully we'll get to close with y'all as you visited us many years ago. Here we go. Travis Bridgman.
remind you about a concert, July the 18th, 6 p.m., Antioch Baptist Church. The um, Dixie Echoes and the Bridgemans will be singing. Danny Jones will be our MC that night. That'll be a fun night. Yes, it will be. Okay, all right, and we're going to go to a video here. 11 years ago, guys, 11 years. They don't look a day older. I might. <laughs> they don't. Here we go, the Bridgemans. Over in the glory land. There's a true story all about glory and the glad angel band. Heaven's angel band. Wonder if it's been told to you. If it's ever been told to you. If I could tell you how it would thrill you, you could then understand. You could understand why the Lord built a place for you. A place for you.
We were lucky <laughs> enough to be in the Harris home in downtown Ball Ground. Miss Betty Jo Harris played the piano at <clears throat> First Baptist of Ball Ground for many, many, many years. She went to be with the Lord and her family in their kindness um, donated that piano and, and it was just a gift. So that was really, really cool. Y'all are going to be at your church July 18th with Dixie Echoes. Dixie Echoes. Mm -hmm. You're going to be mm -hmm. at the Hickory Flat Fellowship Hall, and we're going to insert those. Don't forget, y'all, Heart of the Home is on here on Sundays, on Mondays, on Wednesdays, and on Fridays. And we're going to insert the commercial. It'll show you who's going to be there, and I want you to show up and show out with being there and making a donation to the SGMA. Amen. Yay, Amen. yay, yay, yes, yay. Yes. You see what time it is? We got to go. Mike's <laughs> is waiting on us. Mike's has got this fried okay. chicken, green beans, and black eyed peas waiting on me. So yes. I we'll forgot. See. Can I say happy 87th birthday to my mother, Sunday? Happy That's 87th right. birthday, right. precious <laughs> Miss yes. Hazel. We love you. We love you. We love you. Happy 87. You only look 57. Oh my gosh. 87. <laughs> Whoa, there ain't no way. <laughs> we'll see y'all again. Bye.